Well, it has been a busy week here in the workshop. I was in a real rush to finish this new motor for my solar kayak in time for the solar race, which was held on Sunday. I never got to test the motor with all the electronics on the boat and uh, yeah, this is how it went. William. Woo! Like, uh, In the video there you can clearly hear the pop as some of my electronics failed. So in this video I'm going to put together the system as it was used on race day. I actually have a super capacitor sandwich that I'm going to add into the mix and uh, it will actually help illustrate the mechanism of failure. This is then how I had the motor set up on race day. I used the same motor mount as previously for the brushed motor. There's a new panel, 300 watt Jinko smart panel. The panel feeds into the CP Solar MPPT controller. Directly from the solar panel input, I'm also powering up the buck converter. The buck converter is really just used as a step down DC converter. I wire that in parallel to the ESC. The buck converter puts a voltage on the ESC. I can basically adjust that to whatever I want. That then simulates a battery with a particular voltage for the MPPT to recognize. The ESC is then obviously connected to the motor and I control the ESC directly with a servo tester. Now the part that failed was this small buck converter. You can perhaps make out that there's an entire chunk blown clean out of its switching MOSFET and that suggests that it was uh, totally overloaded and today I'm going to try and experiment and see how that happened. It's gone just past noon and we should get pretty decent power on the panel. Okay so just quickly how I've got this set up. These are my cables coming in from the solar panel and then on the battery terminal I have connected a LiPo, that's a three cell LiPo and in parallel to that there are eight supercapacitors. They are some of these button type capacitors rated at five and a half volts and four farad. So the way I've got it set up there, it's good for eight farad and 11 volts, a good match for that LiPo. That feeds into the ESC. Don't worry about all these other wires. That's just to get another power reading and down to the motor. So what I'm going to do first is run the motor with both battery and supercapacitors connected. Advancing it to full throttle on the servo tester. The important thing to note is the amount of current being drawn from the battery. Voltage has dropped to 10.8, 10.7 and only now does the solar panels start providing power. That current reading over there is unfortunately not very accurate below 1 amp. It has a few calibration issues. But the way the panel gets power, it should be able to pump that voltage right back up to 11 volts instantly. Okay, let's stop this. And I'm going to disconnect the battery and run the ESC straight off the supercapacitors and the solar panel power. 
Okay, now I've got it set up with the solar power going to the super caps. They are connected in parallel to the ESC. This voltage readout is a little slow, so keep an eye on that voltage over there as I open up the throttle. See now this voltage readout is caught up. There's current coming in, but it's very little, 1 amp, 1.1 amp. The panel has plenty of reserve power to push it back to 11 amp or to 11 volts, and that is exactly why my little buck converter failed. That big voltage drop meant that all the power required by the motor was supplied by the buck itself because it's got a very fast response time and I must have just forgotten how to set the current limit and up it went in smoke we are just about back at 11 volts so now I'm going to add some load we'll see how the power supply responds. The maximum power voltage for this panel is at around 31 volts. You can see it's pushing out 2.6 amps. That's nearly, what's that, 8.5 amp going to the motor. So it looks like the system is fairly stable once You've got the motor under load at the correct voltage. The problem is starting up. That initial demand for current drains the super caps too quickly and the response on the MPPT is just too slow to catch up. And that uh, sends the ESC into a standby mode and uh, for whatever reason I was never able to get it out of that mode on race day, but it appears to be running fine now. This is another far cheaper and simpler setup that you can use. It revolves around a 20 amp buck converter or however many amps you need. Simply power in from the solar that gives us our solar voltage and current so we can monitor the panel with to see if it's at maximum power or not into the buck converter from the buck converter to the ESC no capacitors no battery no nothing and let's see how it responds beautiful nineteen watt in from the panel still at thirty four volts and let's add a load. Okay, you can see I did overload for a second and the voltage on the panel dropped to about 12 volts. You can see it tends to jump between 31 and 12. That is obviously roughly where the knee on the voltage current curve lies and the buck converter is doing a fine job of stepping up the current it's two amp coming in from the panel and five and a half amp going to the motor Right, so that was at uh, nominal 11 volts output on the buck converter. I can also adjust the buck converter very easily. Just this trim pot it gives you roughly a voltage per turn. Clockwise will increase your voltage. Let's get that up to 20 volts. Let's take it past. Get some decent speed on the motor. 25. Let's go. 
Are we talking? The motor is drawing about 50 watts with the propeller spinning in air, so it's quite a lot. I think it was around 40 watts without the propeller. So those gears and misaligned shaft does have its drawbacks. I seem to remember the motor itself drew somewhere between 20 and 30 watts without anything connected. I think it was 30 watt with a fairly high friction bearing but uh, yeah that's about 10 watt extra on the on the gearbox. Let me give you a nice close-up of the motor under full power. And this time 25 volts with some load as well. Panel down to 30 volts. That's 200 watt coming in from the panel. There you could hear yeah, I slightly overloaded the motor. So this is a very nice solution. Very simple, cheap to replace if anything blows up and a pretty quick response. I think I'll definitely go and test this on the water. And then the question that is probably on everyone's minds right now is, well, how long can the motor run on just those super caps? So I've got it connected in parallel with the LiPo. I'm going to advance it to full throttle. We're only at 11 volts. And then I'll disconnect the LiPo and we'll do that with the uh, of throttle setting as well. Three, two, one. Okay, not very long. One last time, this time I'm going to go easy on the throttle and as the power drops, I'll slowly advance the throttle. First with the battery, let's just get it cruising and we're gonna go disconnect now, keeping the throttle up, keeping the throttle up. That's obviously not a lot of capacity in these small capacitors, but that might just be enough to give you a nice glide underneath a bridge keep the propeller turning and prevent it from becoming a drag brake exactly when you don't want it